We'll be getting started in one minute. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's student-led Board of Education candidate forum here at Legend High School. My name is Corey Gildner, and I am part of the student advisory group. Joining me as part of our student faculty and moderation panel are fellow members of the student advisory group here at Legends. Carly Stefanik. <laughs> Lindsay Fox. and Savina Miller. I want to thank the candidates tonight for their time this evening and would also like to thank all of you in attendance here and online watching us virtually and engaging in this important process of electing four of these candidates to the Douglas County School District Board of Education election this November. We're going to begin in a few moments. First, I would like to discuss the norms as well as the format for this evening's events. Masks are required to be worn at the student-led candidate forum by all attendees and participants, unless otherwise exempts. Candidates and speakers may remove their masks while they are speaking. If you are 18 or older and wish to, wish to request an exemption from the mask requirement, please speak with the DCSD staff to make your verbal request. For anyone under 18, a parent or guardian's written exemption is required. Thank you for your cooperation. We also ask that attendees please respect our process, the students, and the candidates. We will ask questions this evening, and our candidates will have time to respond to these questions. To our attendees, please do not interrupt during this process, as we want everyone to have ample time to respond to each question. We also appreciate your partnership in making sure this is a safe and civil environment for everyone in attendance. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. Our format for this evening will include a round of one-minute introductions from the candidates followed by a series of questions that have been prepared by our student group based on our feedback received through the RSVP process for this form. Each question will be read by one of our student moderators and each candidate will have 90 seconds to respond. All nine candidates have provided their answers. After all nine candidates have provided their answers, we move on to the next question and repeat this process until we reach the end of our time. After our, after our question, question and answer portion, each, que each candidate will have time for a one minute closing statement before we conclude this event. Once again, thank you for being with us this evening. We will now begin the formal portion of our Board of Education candidate form. We will start with a quick, and I said this wrong, two minute opening statement from each candidate. Mr. Kevin Long, will you please begin? My name is uh, Kevin Leung. I am your current board director and board treasurer. I grew up in extreme poverty in Hong Kong and was the son of illiterate parents. Through hard work and determinations, I earned two master's degree and have lived the American dream, which I'm wanting to try to make sure that I want to share this with the students in my school district. I understand Dallas County because I have lived here for 30 years, own a local business for 15 years, and am the only candidate before you tonight with children that have attended both public charter and neighborhood schools. I have been an active parents representative in the state, district, and school education committee. I am always a champion for parents' engagement and served represent Douglas County on the Colorado State Advisory Council for Parents' Involvement in Education. DCSD has been on a path of improvement, including gaining the trust of the community by passing the first MLO and born in 12 years. I have worked it and will continue to work it if we elected to safely keep in-person learning, 
expand mental health access and career and technical education for all students, increase teacher pay and academic achievements. I have a proven track record of getting things done and will provide experienced and stable leadership at DCSD. Everybody is very passionate in these elections and I know you want your candidate to uh, succeed in eight days, but we would love to give our students a good example to handle themselves the best way that they could so that they can learn from you and have a civil society to move on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Ms. Christy Williams, you may now begin. Hello, um, my name is Christy Williams and I am running for District E. I'm a mom of three children in this district. I have a first grader, a fifth grader, and a seventh grader. When my oldest uh, entered school, I decided that I was going to be hands-on from the beginning. So I joined the PTO where I served my last year as the PTO president. I then joined the school accountability committee and most recently joined the district accountability committee where I'm now serving in my second year. Uh, my two passions are parent engagement and being at a charter school, I understand the value that that brings to the students. So I would like to get all the parents engaged moving forward. And then the other one would be career and tech education. Uh, I was a person that didn't do the post-secondary after high school, and I want to encourage all kids to have a path to success when they leave Douglas County. So I hope uh, that I can bring predict predictability and stability back to this district. Thank you, Legend, for hosting, and I ask that you all please respect these amazing students and their requests that they put forth this evening, and I look forward to earning your vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Ms. Swaniger, you may now begin. Is it on? Oh, it is. Oh no. Okay, the light must be broken. Um, hi, my name is Kaylee Weininger, and thank you, Legend High School, for hosting tonight. Um, I am running for District G, and I have a daughter in kindergarten at our local neighborhood school, and I have one on the way due in April. So every decision made by DCSD leadership will directly affect me in the short and long term. I also grew up in Douglas County. My siblings and I graduated from Ponderosa. Go Mustangs. Sorry, is that allowed here? <laughs> While growing up here, my dad was a preacher for a while, and my mom, who's sitting over there, was a school teacher in Douglas County for 15 years. She was part of the tidal wave of teachers and principals who left our district six plus years ago. She left because of changes to compensation as well as strict top-down unreasonable commands from district leadership. I do not want another exodus of great teachers and staff like we saw six years ago. We have great people who work in our district and I want them to thrive in a culture that frees them to do what they love, which is to simply teach our kids. I am concerned about the well-being of our children over more fighting and more division that is currently taking place. Finally, I'm a working mom who does accounting for a financial services company. I have studied on how our school district gets funded and I promise to be an honest steward in our district's budget should I get the honor of being on the school board. Thank you for being here and being respectful of the decorum rules in place. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Weiniger. Ms. Krista Holtzman, you may now begin. Hi, my name is Krista Holtzman and I am the vice president of your Douglas County School Board. I wanna thank you students in our district and legend in particular for having us tonight and thank all of you for being here. I wanna thank you in advance also for recognizing the request of our students and for modeling our community's shared values of respecting and caring for one another. As a preschool teacher and an attorney, I've spent my professional life advocating for the best interest of students and families. My own family has lived in Parker for over 20 years, where my husband is a healthcare professional and a small business owner, and our two sons graduated from Chaparral High School in 2015 and 2016. During their time in Douglas County School District, it was a joy to volunteer in their classrooms and their extracurricular activities. And while doing that, I gained a greater understanding of the very strong educational foundation that exists here in Douglas County School District. 
I also learned of some significant challenges our schools were facing. So in 2017, I asked for your vote so that I could advocate and support our students so that each of them would have e excellent educational opportunities to help them reach their own full, unique potential, just as my own sons had had. I'm here again tonight, proud of the progress we've made um, by increasing teacher retention, increasing academic achievement, and repairing buildings that had been neglected and enhancing physical security. I'm hoping to talk about many of the other things that we have done over the past four years, um, but right now I'm just remaining. asking for your support um, so that I can continue this work. And I would also ask that you would allow um, Director Lung, Dr. Martinez, and Ms. Watkins to join me in keeping the positive momentum going in Douglas County School District. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Holtzman. Mr. Mike Peterson, you may now begin. Hi, I'm Mike Peterson and I'm running for District B here in Douglas County on the school board. I'm the father of three daughters who either attended or are still attending public schools. Um, one of them is up at the University of Denver, actually over in Italy right now. I've got another one that completed a year of the bridge program last year. She has a genetic disability and my youngest we adopted from China. My wife's here with me tonight in the audience, and she is an uh, effective needs volunteer down at Little Larkspur Elementary working with kids that have social emotional needs. I'm a 25-year veteran of the United States Navy. I spent most of my time flying on and off aircraft carriers, and I'm a Top Gun graduate. I was also an overseas uh, naval base executive officer, and I spent the last three years in the military as an assistant professor down at the Air Force Academy, a Navy guy teaching at Air Force, helping to develop future leaders of character. While I'm running for the school board is because I think we need new leadership here on the board and we need someone that's looking to bring parents and teachers back together in a natural partnership of mutual respect for academic excellence for our kids. If we can put the parents and teachers back together again, then most of the issues we're seeing and a lot of the division that we're seeing will solve itself. And finally, I am absolutely proud to be running with Becky Myers, Kaylee Weininger, and Christy Williams on the Kids First ticket, and we look forward to a respectful dialogue among the candidates and audience participation tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Ms. Julie Watkins, you may now begin. Hi, thank you for having me. My name is Julie Watkins, and I, too, am running in District B, and I wanted to thank the student organizers for organizing and also for the nice reminder to everyone that we need to lead by example with civility and respect for each other. Please express your opinions at the pallet box on November 2nd. Um, I have been a DCSD resident for, I'm sorry, I've not been a DCSD resident, I've been a Douglas County resident for the past 11 years. I have, I'm married and I have two teenage daughters who have been in the district since they were in kindergarten. And I too am the product of a public school system and I graduated from the University of Kansas um, and I have had more than 25 years of professional experience in strategic marketing communications and nonprofit management. We moved here because of the reputation of the school district. And not long after our kids enrolled, which was in 2011, we learned along with the rest of the community that there were people on the board working to dismantle and privatize our award-winning district. After eight long years, the community finally voted them all out. And it's been a long road to right this ship. And I wanna to contribute to building on the momentum of these past four years, especially by leveraging my experience as an active volunteer and PTO leader in our schools with my professional background to keep pushing forward. My top three priorities are safe in-person learning, continuing with that, also continuing to build on the academic achievement and continuing to expand teacher compensation and benefits. After watching the amazing progress the past four years and seeing the noise from the pandemic take the spotlight off so many of the great things that have been accomplished, I'm really excited to bring the focus back on to returning DCSD to its status as a destination district for students and remaining. teachers. Again, my name is Julie Watkins, and I hope to earn your vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Watkins. Dr. Ruby Martinez, you may now start. Hello, and thank you for hosting us, Legend High School. I am Dr. Ruby Martinez. I'm retired from the University of Colorado as an associate professor emeritus. Um, at the University of Colorado, I taught psychiatric nursing for eight years and I conducted research on runaway teenagers. I am specialized as an advanced practice psychiatric nurse and I still practice part-time. 
Um, I have served on several boards and have held many leadership roles in my career. I've lived in Colorado my entire life, except for the time when my husband was stationed in California when he served in the Air Force. We have lived in um, Douglas County for um, close to 12 years now, and, um, and we live in Castle Rock. We have, um, my husband and I have two daughters, and one's a nurse, one's a teacher, and we have grandbabies that we try to spoil as much as we can. I am running for this, this seat because I am passionate about education. I believe that education is the key to a prosperous and peaceful society. I want each student to move through um, the Douglas County system feeling successful, feeling that they are highly valued, and leaving with a very solid plan for what they're going to do when they leave. I want to continue the success that has um, been accomplished over the past several years, and I hope that I will earn your, uh, your vote, your trust, and again, I'm Ruby Martinez. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. Ms. Becky Myers, you may now begin. Good evening. My name is Becky Myers, and I'm running for school board District D. Thank you for coming tonight. Students, Legend High School, thank you for having us here for this forum. forum. I'm a retired Douglas County school teacher. I'm a mother of two Douglas County High School graduates and a grandmother of five, three of which are in Douglas County School District. I started substitute teaching in 1993, and in 1997, I was hired to open the Family and Consumer Science Department at Ranch View Middle School. I had been 16 years out of the classroom, but the principal took a chance and hired me. In 2004, I became the teacher librarian and completed my Master's of Information Technology in 2005. I retired in 2014 and continued to substitute teach for three more years. One of the reasons that I'm running for Douglas County School Board is for my grandchildren, the other 64,000 students in the district, and for the private and homeschooled in our district. I support parent choice and for their voice, voices to be heard. I want, them to be, I want to become a school board director because I know teachers and I can be an advocate for them. Thank you for this opportunity to answer questions and to share my views. And we ask that you honor what our students have set up tonight. And in my best teacher voice, behave. Thank you, Ms. Myers. I now give it to Carly Stefanik. Thank you. From our experience, DCSD students have had a limited form of sexual education. What are your thoughts on providing an updated, comprehensive form of sexual education? Mr. Lung, we will begin with you. House Bill 19-1032, um, an amendment to uh, the 1213 laws, has set um, a sex, sexual education um, for um, the Colorado educations. And it also provides $1 million of annual grants to help school districts update their sexual health in you know, the program. Um, CDC suggests uh, sex education curriculums that include information on the effective use of contraceptive, uh, abstinence, healthy relationships, um, autonomy, Representing, respecting difference in sexuality and uh, understanding sexual concern is important for the mental health and the physical health of our students. In Dallas County School District, after the 2019 law um, has passed, um, we used to have every single school have their own um, sex ed, and now uh, we are trying to develop more consistent um, curriculums. And so what we do lead is um, we need to um, seconds remaining. have some sort of um, um, knowledge and skills with the topics that I just mentioned a while ago in uh, the 1910-32 um, House Bill, and make sure that we Your respect each other's um, in the relationships. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lung. Mrs. Williams, your time starts now. 
So the state is the one who defines what, what we teach when it comes to sexual education. The most important thing that I think we can do is be completely transparent with what is being taught so that parents can decide if they want to opt their child out. For example, um, my child in fifth grade was going through the whole puberty talk and the school sent home a bunch of links and things that we could look at to verify that that is something that we in fact wanted the school to teach or we also had the opportunity to do that ourselves at home with the child or both in conjunction with one another. So this way it gives parents um, an opportunity to have that conversation and do what's best for their family. I would hope that this is common practice and I will always honor that right for our families. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Mrs. Weiniger, your time starts now. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> Um, our school's purpose to is to provide an academic education for our students. We are a public education system and some laws on non-academic subjects like sex education get passed at the state level that say certain sex education lessons must be included. That's nothing new. When I was a DCSD student, we also had sex education. To me, what's important is transparency with parents. Sex education needs to include parent involvement as it is a tender area where parents may wish to be the ones rather than someone else to teach their children about sex. That's why it's important to stay transparent with parents on lessons that have to do with sex education and allow them opportunity to opt out of those lessons as well as opportunity to view the learning material involving those lessons. The schools are here for academics, preparing our kids for higher education, military, or workforce. There are some lessons that are best taught at home. Sometimes those intersect, but parents are the ultimate authority over their children's education. And therefore, transparency and choice is vital to a thriving community like Douglas County. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Weiniger. Ms. Mrs. Holtzman, your time starts now. Thank you. It's important for our students to receive medically and scientifically accurate information to empower them to make informed decisions to promote their own health and well-being. It's been said and it's accurate that in 2019 the Colorado General Assembly approved the Comprehensive Human Sexuality Education Act. It's a part of the Colorado academic standards. And it says that if any public school offers comprehensive sexual education, it must be consistent with the content and delivery requirements in this statute. And I can tell you that in Douglas County School District, our policies align with this, and we do have systems and processes in place to meet the requirements of this statute. Some of those require prior written notice to the parents with a detailed substantive outline of the topics and materials to be presented. Instruction needs to be comprehensive, age appropriate, medically accurate, culturally sensitive, and inclusive of a positive youth development framework. The statute also says instruction must not use shame-based or stigmatizing language or instructional tools. 15 seconds remaining. It must not employ gender stereotyping. It must not exclude the health needs of intersex individuals or LGBTQ. As a director, I am responsible and accountable for making sure these things are provided to our students and our families. Thank you, Mrs. Holtzman. Mr. Peterson, your time starts now. As far as an updated form of education uh, for our sexual curriculum, I think the first thing we need to do is go to the parents and students and see if there's any gaps there. Uh, we have a great student advisory uh, group, a committee that, of the students, and that would probably be the first place I'd start as a board. They represent other students across the entire district, and I'd put the question to them. If there's a gap or something that needs to be updated, ask the students, and also a critical stakeholder here is ask the parents. Um, one solution may be to offer different tracks uh, that allow choice for either the student, not just to opt out or opt in, but to pick a different track that aligns with their values, whether they're religious or otherwise, or aligns with their parents' values. But that's something we'd have to consider. 
Uh, I would also want to ensure that sexual education takes a backseat to the core academic standards of math, literacy, science, and the other things, with roughly 50% of our students at least one grade level or more behind in these core academics. Even here in Douglas County, we want to make sure that we prioritize time for those core academics, which are a little bit behind where they could be, and then ensure that sexual education is comprehensive, complies with state standards, and can be balanced between school and work environment and actually not work, home environment for our kids. 15 seconds uh, remaining. With that, thank you much. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Mrs. Watkins, your time starts now. Thank you. Um, I, I learned something yesterday, and that is that Colorado is the only state in the U.S. that does not require a health education course for graduation. But as mentioned earlier, the recent legislation strengthens the state standards for comprehensive sexual health education and provides funding to help them help the school districts update those programs. And as Kevin mentioned earlier in the past, DCSD left it up to each individual school how to teach sex education and is now starting to develop a more uniform and consistent curriculum district wide. And as I mentioned, the educational standards are set by the state and the districts are expected to teach to those standards. And the Colorado Standards in Comprehensive Health and Physical Education are, and I'm just quoting these, apply knowledge and skills necessary to make personal decisions that promote healthy relationships and sexual and reproductive health, apply knowledge and skills related to health promotion, disease prevention, and health maintenance, and apply knowledge and skills that promote healthy, violence-free relationships. I don't find any of these standards controversial, and I fully support the district teaching an updated and comprehensive sexual education curriculum to our students. And if elected, I look forward to leveraging the economies of scale on our district to ensure efficiency and consistency. 15 seconds. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Watkins. Dr. Martinez, your time starts now. I think that uh, for young people, discovering who you are is very much a part of what you do when you are in school, and particularly when one is a preteen and then a teenager. However, sexual education is um, somewhat of a taboo subject in our society. And so therefore, I'm very happy that the public schools teach um, uh, sexual education. Um, there's no doubt some kids have parents that they can talk to about anything, anything they're hearing in school from their peers, but that's not the case for everyone. And as a nurse, I have encountered young people who check out things they've heard with me and they are very wrong. They have wrong information. They do not, they're not fully checked out on issues around sexually transmitted diseases and pregnancy. I think young people need to know the facts and so I am glad that we uh, provide that. I do believe that parents then provide the other half of this really important uh, part of education and that is values. In the home is where that young person will hear remaining. what expectations are. If your expectation as a parent is abstaining from sexual activity, you're going to talk about that and why it's important. If you have other ideas, you're going to talk about that. So I believe that we can work together and we can fully inform our up. young people so that they can make good decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. Mrs. Myers, your time begins now. I'm going to answer this question as a mother and a grandmother. And I'm particularly addressing this to the kids in the room and the audience. At some point in your journey of life, you're going to have to take responsibility for who and what you listen to and make good, wise decisions, as both my children did. The state of Colorado has state curriculum standards regarding healthy relationships, sexual and reproductive health. I'm here to tell you as an adult and someone who's been around the block, you know you have access to so much more sexually on TV, internet, and the social media than I ever was accustomed to. So for this time in your life, I want you to guard and protect what little innocence that you have. Value your moments as a teenager and be young for a while because I'm telling you, you're gonna be an adult for a long time. And there are some things I wish I didn't know. 
Try talking to your parents or an adult, someone you t trust and respect, someone who loves you that can answer these types of questions. It's not important to know everything right now. And remaining. it's okay to learn life through experiences. Hang out, laugh, and have fun with your friends. You're not going to learn everything in school. You will learn a lot in life through personal experiences, so learn from those experiences. Thank you, Mrs. Myers. What are your plans to ensure equitable access to educational opportunities for all students in Douglas County? We will start with you, Mrs. Weiniger. Your time begins now. Every child, no matter their background, should feel like they are able to do what every other person is able to do. They should feel secure about enrolling for advanced placement classes if they qualify. They should feel welcomed in, join, in, in joining that extracurricular after school activity if they want to. We live in a great country that allows every person, no matter their background or identity or class or anything else, to have the same opportunity as those that are different from them. There are laws that protect each individual from discrimination that hinders those opportunities. And Douglas County is no different. I want every child and parent to feel comfortable reaching out when they don't feel like they have access to resources offered by their school district. If there are any children or parents who are feeling separated and not welcome to an opportunity they are interested in, then that is not okay. And I want them to know they can absolutely speak up about it and to any of our great administrators and they will be met with genuine concern and immediate action. Every person deserves to be treated with kindness. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Weiniger. Mrs. Holtzman, your time starts now. Thanks. So educational access to opportunities has long been an important value in Douglas County School District. It's an important value of this current board. We recommitted to this, to educational equity in a policy within the past year, just saying that it's fundamentally important that our students all have access to opportunities, that they all feel welcome, safe, and valued. Right now, it is critical that each of our students has access to in-person learning. <clears throat> As Director Ray recently said, no parent should be forced to choose between access to in-person learning and putting their child's life in jeopardy. So for me, it starts with making sure that we continue comprehensive COVID mitigation strategies so that in-person learning is acceptable to all of our students, including our most vulnerable students. Our board has worked on access to other opportunities over the past four years, and I'm proud of that progress that we've made. Um, we've increased access to career and technical education opportunities over 50% in four seconds years. Remaining. Um, we've increased access to counselors by placing one in every middle school and more at our secondary schools. Um, and, and we have continued work to do. We need to look at ways to improve transportation. Your time is up. And, and thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Holtzman. Mr. Peterson, your time begins now. To ensure equitable access, you have to do more than just write well-intentioned policy. Director Holtzman just mentioned the educational equity policy, and I think if you read it, it's, there's some pretty good stuff in there. It's things about inclusion, belonging, uh, equitable access to resources, but you have to go beyond just writing well-intended policy. You need to ensure that the implementation of that policy in the district, in the real world, matches the intent of that policy. So here we have an educational equity policy, which sounds great on paper, but we have groups like the Gemini group coming in, doing 900, over 900 staff members in a professional development session. And I'll just quote from them. Some voices are more valid than others, and they're doing that based on identity. They quote, say parents can be the biggest challenge, and you might have a different thinking process, but this is how the school district where your children attend will educate your children. They are a divisive group that sees everything through the, through the uh, lens of race. In fact, when their training got canceled, this same group said, quote, it's just a bunch of white parents demanding that we not talk about race. But it's just not that one Gemini group incident. We have no place for hate in 29 schools in the district. A group that encourages moving remaining. beyond kindness to activism and social justice. 
They have lessons on abolishing the police, reforming the electoral college and reparations. And then finally, we have the real world sociology textbook, which many parents spoke out against and this group stamped through a rubber, uh, rubber stamp approval of consent agenda. Policy needs to match its implementation. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Mrs. Watkins, your time begins now. Well, fortunately, Douglas County School District is already focused on ensuring equitable access to educational opportunities for all students through its educational equity policy. And as Krista mentioned earlier, it is something that was put into a formal policy form, but it had always been an underlying value of the district. And the purpose of this educational equity policy is to show continued commitment to ensuring that every DCSD student and staff member has access to equitable and rigorous educational opportunities. The policy also reaffirms DCSD's commitment to providing an inclusive culture to ensure that all students, staff, and community members feel safe and valued. The educational equity policy is not an implementation of critical race theory as has been suggested, and it's not about providing equal outcomes for our students. It's about providing equitable access to a quality education for all. And if elected, I would advocate for a continued focus on this policy, and I'd also like to identify and define measurable standards that could quantify the impact of this policy over time. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Watkins. Dr. Martinez, your time begins now. Douglas County has an education equity policy that states a value to ensure that every student has access to equitable and rigorous educational opportunities, and I wholeheartedly support that. I wish to say, um, because of the comments that were um, just made a few minutes ago, um, I do support um, a discussion within the schools about equity and helping people understand how we uh, level the playing fields for all students. I do not believe that the Gemini group was going to pit one racial group against another. Um, I attended the board meeting where the presentation was made. I heard nothing and saw nothing that actually indicated that. I do not believe that people who support equity and inclusiveness and diversity want to dissolve police departments. I do not want to dissolve the police department. I served on the Public Safety Commission in Castle Rock for several years and very much support the police and the fire department. And so... 15 seconds remaining. And so I, I do want us to continue the very valuable work that we're doing um, in Douglas County um, on an uh, education equity policy. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. Mrs. Myers, your time begins now. I have two completely different children, and while my daughter did well in school and chose college, my son needed a little bit to be guided down a different path. We do need to recognize when our students learn differently and need choices. We all learn what we love, so let's discover that while we are in school. I know teachers are trained through professional development and have resources in school to teach and guide them in working with all students to provide a quality of education. Our teachers accommodate students in their class curriculum and use a variety of teaching methods to help all students become successful. Douglas County works diligently to provide choice. We have charter schools, career and tech ed, homeschool and alternative education, and the transition Bri bridge program. We need to find resources for training students for a trade, associate degree programs, and other career choices. We support a bond issue, a bond issue and MLOs so our buildings can be built or renovated and teachers can be hired. It is important to listen to our students and our parents, talk with community members, remaining. and encourage students to have meaningful conversations about how to reach their goals and be successful. Thank you, Mrs. Myers. Mr. Lung, your time begins now. To ensure equitable access, you need to make sure that you pick a white choice in these elections. Our opponent, second guess our superintendents, by what he choose to um, 
have some sort of WC training for the staff. They have been repeatedly bad-mouthing the school district with the I date, with the I ready data, which they probably don't understand that shows a progress of a student, not the whole student. So if you don't understand the data and you represent the data, how can you expect you to gain uh, equitable access to all students? And if you second guess our superintendent's choice of even bringing a group to for staff training, how do you expect you work with the superintendents? That will create huge instability in the school district. To do this right, we need to make sure that we use the data in iReady and the state's performance framework, digest it, trying to figure out what subgroups that need to help the most in order to raise everybody's uh, standards for the entire school district. Namely, special ed groups, economic disadvantaged groups, minority, English as second learner groups. Seconds remaining. Those a little more resources, our accuracy, our policy that we pass this year has not even implemented that. We're just getting the member for the uh, advisory council. So with that in place, with the right Your board member in place up. like myself, you will be able to get a good implementations to help all students to be able to get there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Mrs. Williams, your time begins now. I think first we need to make sure our teachers have the tools necessary to make sure equal opportunities are available. We need to focus on making sure that all children are met where they're at, whether that's gifted and talented, mainstream, or special education. We need to focus on making sure that all children reach their individual potential. This means keeping our AP classes, are offering career and tech education and continuing to grow our special education. In addition, all children deserve to feel loved, welcomed, and have a sense of belonging anytime they walk through the doors in Douglas County. All children deserve to feel heard and respected, and that would be my goal as a director on this board. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. I would now like to hand it over to Lindsay Fox. Thank you. For our next question, in reflecting on the Douglas County School District's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, what would you keep the same and what would you do differently? Mr. Peterson, your time starts now. What, I keep, what would I keep the same? Uh, multiple paths to learning, including in-person learning and distance e-learning. Uh, what I wouldn't do is sue the Douglas County Board of Health and cause more division in this district, uh, separating parents and putting parents against parents, parents against teachers, and now putting the entire school board against the district. Um, this further divides the county, and it's a lose-lose. The taxpayers, everyone in this audience, will pay for this lawsuit. If the district wins, it's coming out of the district funds. If the Department of Health wins, it's coming also out of county funds. Um, several special needs parents have called me and they have been appalled with the use of special needs parent or students and families to push this board sanctioned lawsuit. This board exhibits a trend of fear based reactionary decision making. If you look at the Douglas County data, since we're talking about data tonight, one death under 18 in the county due to COVID since the pandemic began. The average age of death due to COVID in Douglas County is 80 years old. The 14 day rolling hospitalization rate here in Douglas County is 0.4 per 100,000. That is almost four times the entire student population of Douglas County. When you look at a comprehensive analysis of 109 specific remaining. scientific studies, you see that masks don't work, the ordinary fabric masks have a 99.7% penetration, and that build up carbon dioxide produces many worsening of five pediatric diseases, three neurological diseases, Your time is up. six internal diseases, and two ear, nose, throat diseases. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Ms. Watkins, your time starts now. Thank you. Um, hindsight is always 2020, but when I look back now at what the district did and didn't do, I honestly believe that they did the best they could under their circumstances. We were in uncharted territory with a global pandemic in the spring of 2020. And I was impressed that the district had the foresight before spring break to get laptops checked out to students who needed them before they left. And I think DCSD did an amazing job of trying to keep our students engaged through remote learning that spring. Sorry, and the community really stepped up too to support the 
so many students who missed out on rites of passage like spring sports, proms, and graduation ceremonies. As a parent, uh, we chose the hybrid option for our kids, and I was lucky that both my husband and I were at home, so there wasn't any issue with transportation or childcare. But I know that wasn't the case with everyone. And I cannot even imagine the burden on those who had to make decisions about keeping their job or staying home with their students um, while their children were learning remotely. And I was appreciative when the district scheduled the cohorts for hybrid learning so to make sure that families weren't split up on different days. And if we, had not kn if we had known what we do know now, I suppose I might have possibly returned to full in-person learning sooner in the second semester last year than we did. seconds remaining. But I also believe the decision to approach with caution was prudent and in the best interest of everyone's health and safety because being okay with just losing one kid is one too many. Thank you. Thank you. M Dr. Martinez, your time starts now. I agree with the school board for following the advice of the experts and so I really can't be critical of the actions that they took. I personally am not sympathetic to the argument that now there is a lawsuit from the, um, the school board against the new health department and the reason I feel that way is because we, the taxpayers, are going to pay for an entirely new health department out of our tax dollars. So a lawsuit is going to be just a small portion versus when you look at what we're all going to pay to create this brand new health department. And I also wish to say that I'm very disappointed with how that health department appointed its directors. There's really not even one person on that board who really could advise any one of us, if we have another pandemic and we have to deal with a deadly virus, a deadly bacteria, there's no one on that board who can advise us as a community what to do. Remaining. So I am glad that we are going to look at whether or not we have um, a qualified board to look at this issue. So I, as, as a school board member would follow the science. That's what I would do, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. Mrs. Myers, your time starts now. I would definitely keep the in-school learning and Douglas County is still providing e-learning, so there are choices. Our students lost over a year of academic education and the school district was not listening to parents. I am an advocate that parents know what is best for their kids and as a parent and a grandmother, Kids need this social interaction between peers and teacher interaction alongside the education. The potential educational harm of mandatory masking policies are much more firmly established, at least at this point, than the possible benefit of stopping the spread. Being overly cautious has cost while the benefits are uncertain. There is other data supporting masks are not effective. Our kids need to develop cultural language and social skills. Let's keep our kids in school, no mandates. Thank you, Mrs. Myers. Mr. Lung, your time starts now. It's always my highest priority to keep all of our students in person learning. For students with lung and kidney disease, Down syndrome, autoimmune disorder, and cancer, they lead us to protect them. We serve all students. Unlike our Poland, who seems to be only thinking about the, 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 the parents, a few parents. The board has tried our best to encourage vaccinations. We follow the CDC, American Pediatricians Associations, and other very famous um, country-wise um, experts have mass mandate so that all students have equal chance to come in to school in person. We also have other components of a layered approach, just like washing hands, social distancing, disinfecting frequently. So we do have a comprehensive approach to these issues, which I'm part of this. One thing that if I could change is we should have the mask mandate much earlier so that we don't have a spy in terms of a number of quarantine at the beginning of the school years, 
And for those students who must have mask mandate to go to school because the Delta variant affects so many students, they can choose in-person learning instead of having to go to e-learning because of up. that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lung. Mrs. Williams, your time starts now. I think it was great that the district offered different types of learning, whether you wanted e-learning or in-person. DCSD should have had a plan in place in May or June earlier in the year, uh, allowing for adjustments as guidelines changed. Unfortunately, there was a lot of back and forth. Children were yo-yoed in and out of school, hybrid, remote, full-time, in-person. There was a way to keep kids in school the entire year if that was their family's choice. Following local guidelines and recommendations was possible while maintaining a safe environment to learn. When the district had families fill out a survey and the families overwhelmingly at 84% vote to be in school full time, the community expects that they follow that. The current board can say they went back to school earlier than most other districts. But the truth is, there were schools in this district that were in person the entire time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Ms. Weiniger, your time starts now. The decisions our school board directors were faced with during COVID were not easy. We were in an unprecedented climate, and it's easy for me to say what I would have done differently. However, enough time has passed to know what worked and what was actually detrimental decisions. Lockdowns and quarantining the well had good results behind it when it came to preventing the spread of the disease, but the negative impacts it had on the mental health and well-being of everyone absolutely outweighed the good it did. So it's great that is now being realized and we have kids back in school and the ones staying home are the sick ones. COVID and other communicable diseases are real and something we should absolutely take seriously. When making policy and other action item decisions to protect our kids and staff from sicknesses, it's important to use data and use common sense. Common sense to me means looking at the pros and cons of the safeguard options in place. We need to balance the needs of our kids and staff with how effective our safeguards actually are and evaluate the data that supports those safeguards. If the data and expertise is not definitive and there exists negative impacts, then stepping back and giving choice 15 seconds. to our parents and staff is the right answer. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Weiniger. Ms. Holtzman, your time starts now. Thanks. I can say with confidence that our board team and our DCSD staff made every decision during the course of this unexpected public health crisis with the best interest of our students in mind. We took it to heart. We spent hours talking to experts, reviewing research, sleepless nights, because it was a huge responsibility to make sure that we were caring in the best way we could for our students, our staff, and our community. We immediately determined that the best interest of our students was to provide in-person learning as safe and as much as possible. We also started a completely separate online education system in a very short period of time because the pandemic was unexpected by everyone. We looked to experts. They helped us develop and implement comprehensive strategies that included things like cleaning and disinfecting, frequent hand washing, social distancing, improved ventilation, isolations, quarantines, and face coverings. Since this was a novel virus or new to even the experts, and the data changed quite frequently, yes, sometimes recommendations changed, and we followed those recommendations. Are there times when perhaps remaining. we could have done something differently? Of course. But over the course of time, we were the first similarly sized Denver Metro District to go back in person, and we did stay in person the longest. And now today- Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Holtzman. Okay, for our next question. What is your plan to provide mental health resources and supports for students and staff in the Douglas County School District? Dr. Dr. Martinez, your time starts now.
I wish to commend the current school board, including Krista and Kevin, for the excellent resources that Douglas County Schools have at present. They have provided counselors in each elementary school, have implemented Safe to Tell Colorado and the Peer Leaders Program. They've built partnerships with the Douglas County Youth Coalition and All Health Network uh, to address mental health and substance abuse in um, our students. Youth suicide would be a focus for me. Uh, the rate of youth suicide has been rising since the year 2007. I don't want anyone here to think that um, this is something new in the last year or two. The suicide rate has doubled um, between 2007 and the year 2020. We know that COVID has caused significant stressors for our young people. And we do have to be vigilant. We have to be sure that teachers, parents understand how to watch for risk factors, that we are ready to intervene if we suspect that um, there is a child who is at risk. Every student must have at least one trusted adult in their life. Thank you. Thank you, Mar Dr. Martinez. Ms. Myers, your time starts now. Our students mental health is an issue we need to address immediately. It's time to thoroughly research why our kids are strugg struggling with anxiety, depression, and social skills. We have incredible staff members here in Douglas County, teachers, counselors, leaders who are compassionate, caring, and nurturing. But we do need expert staff and programs that will listen to the students and the parents who are struggling to understand what their children are going through. We have to have these hard conversations. Listen, look at the data on mental health, and again, use the experts and varied resources we have in this community. Back when Facebook was created, the only college-age kids could be on it. Now we have kids 13, even younger, because they can hide their age. And now we have Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, and Twitter. We've been exposed to these things and so are the kids. Perhaps we as parents need to limit our kids' times on devices and in schools, teachers can have more group and face-to-face -face interaction than time spent on the internet. 15 seconds I remaining. personally remember when I was the teacher librarian how teachers were forced to adopt the internet and immerse students in using devices. The mental health crisis is not one our school district needs to fight alone. Working together, recognizing potential problems will help us to have success. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Myers. Mr. Lung, your time starts now. This board has done so much to address this area. If we elected, I'll continue the progress that we are making, such as reduce the environmental, social, and economical factor that contribute to stretch, stress. Isolation is one of the biggest issues you know, for mental health. And creating a positive climate and culture where everybody feels they are valued and is an inclusive culture, so no subgroup feel that they are not being appreciative, or uh, no groups are being prevented to go back to school full time because of their illness. So that's why in-person learning is very important, and that's why this board is fighting, using all the tools to make sure that in-person learning for everybody will be carried out. Also. I'm so proud that you know, I serve in the Student Advisory Committee and the only one in the Metro Denver area. We have a mental health subgroup. We listen to them. And we're also able to thanks for your uh, born and a meal levy money in 2018. We're able to hire each counselor, even for elementary school. We lead high quality mental health staff and we need to keep them. To keep them, we need to make sure that we have a stable environment that the staff can rely on, not you know, have a big change in the next elections. And also make sure that our equity policy is implemented, not just up there and being criticized and criticized and criticized by the opponents because we have not even implemented. Your time is up. Thank you, Mr. Long. Ms. Williams, your time starts now. Children's Hospital just released yet another article on the mental health crisis. Mental health is a problem. 
We need to work with experts and liaisons at places like Denver Springs and All Health Network to learn how we can better support our students. They are on the front lines with our kids helping and treating them in inpatient settings. The current board wants to seek out more programming that is not local. We need to direct conversations to local experts who see our students here in Douglas County. We need our parents to feel heard when it comes to their children and mental health. They should know the school and the district are on their side. I had a parent reach out to me and this is what she wrote in part. While the board is focused on data collecting and using that data to try to find programs to support kids, they are forgetting about the kids. There is a child attached to those data points. What happens to that child after they're entered into a spreadsheet? We cannot allow families to feel that they're just a data point. We cannot have mental health fall through the cracks. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Ms. Weiniger, your time starts now. It has been heartbreaking hearing experience after experience of last year and what these school lockdowns and quarantines have done to the mental well-being of our kids. It's not something to ignore and just hope it gets better. It's a big issue that will only get worse if we have a culture of intimidation and anxiety that sadly some kids have currently been experiencing at our very schools. Normalcy and stability are vital for our kids and that should be priority. We can't assume we know best based on our feelings or political stance. And we need to stop with the bait and switch decisions that are frustrating and dividing our community. Instead, we need to make data-driven decisions when it comes to the tools and resources and support our staff and parents, their needs from the schools, and to make sure we're wrapping our kids with what they need to feel normal and stable again. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Weiniger. Ms. Krista Holtzman, your time starts now. Yeah. I want to thank everyone who's already mentioned um, the great increase in counselors that we were able to make after we sought and gained your approval of the 2018 bond and MLO. Um, we set the gold standard, standard across the state of Colorado for access to counseling. And the local partners that we have, including All Health, and I hate to name anyone because I'm afraid to leave people out, but there's a, a local physician named Dr. Cypers who has partnered with us to help train our staff and our parents in terms of social emotional issues and mental health. Um, so we need to continue to work on all of that progress. Um, and also, there's a lot of problems lot of programs that address these issues for our students in Douglas County School District that you may not be aware of and that I am so proud of. Things like the DC Support Center, Plum Creek Academy, programs inside our schools such as Sources of Strength, Link Crew, um, ACE um, at Highlands Ranch High School which stands for Alternative Cooperative Education Program. All of these schools and teachers and counselors are working so hard to meet our students who do need our assistance. 15 seconds. Um, I also want to talk about our staff. Our employee assistance program it has been recognized. Forbes magazine recently named us one of the top 20 employers in Colorado. And I, I think a lot of that was based upon our great benefits. And I also want to strengthen parent engagement um, to help at our school level. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Holtzman. Or, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Holtzman. Mr. Peterson, your time starts now. Colorado has the six worst uh, statistics for suicide in the nation. Um, being a military veteran, I know a lot of uh, military people have had issues with despair and suicide. In fact, we lose four times as many people in the military to suicide than we do in operations. And I think we can take some of those lessons learned and bring them to the school district and look at things that have worked for our veterans and see if we can apply them to our students because they have also gone through a lot of trauma in the last two years. One of the best things we can do is get those social connections back together because we know they act as a buffer against stressful and negative life experiences. And going back to masking, one of the best things we can do is offer choice in masking and predictability. Going back to the studies I was citing earlier, a study of 26,000 mask wearing students cited the following problems. 53% headache, 50% difficulty tra concentrating, 49% cited a feeling of joylessness or despair. 
Learning difficulties were cited by 38% and fatigue by 37%. We need to allow our teachers to be educators, not enforcers, and mask removal and choice can be critical to mental health. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Ms. Ms. Watkins, your time starts now. Thanks to the monies from the 2018 MLO, DCSD has become the gold standard for mental health resources in, in, across the state of Colorado. And I'd like to see that continue. Everybody recognizes that mental health is a, an issue, a problem, and it's not going away anytime soon. And I don't think there's a single person up here who, who would advocate for not continuing what we, we've been doing and, and doing even more. Um, as strong as, as, as our program is right now, it can always be better. And I would want to continually keep a pulse on how our current mental health resources are doing, both from the mental health team's perspective and from the students and the parents. I'm not sure how that would look, but I would want to be able to quantifiably assess what's working well and where the gaps are so that we can continually address them. And, and on to the uh, topic of our staff, um, they are supported with an employee assistance program that's provided through the district's health care benefits package. And again, there's always room to do better. Um, and I would advocate continually monitoring these programs and these resources to make sure we are providing the best mental health resources for our teachers and our staff. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Watkins. I'll now be handing it over to Savina Miller. All right. What are two things you would do as a Board of Education Director to help retain teachers and staff in Douglas County? Uh, Dr. Ruby Martinez, we'll start with you. I'm sorry, I did not hear which question you were going to. Was it the retention of teachers and staff? Yes. Thank you. I think that everyone on this stage can agree that we need competitive salaries uh, for our teaching staff. But I also want to say that we need to appreci appreciate that teaching is one of the most stressful jobs in the United States. I looked at some literature um, in preparing to come here today and most teachers in the United States say that they are satisfied with their job, but they feel that their profession is not valued. And um, they talked about things that were really important to them, like shared responsibilities, team teaching, so that younger teachers can learn from more expert teachers. Um, they did cite that um, teachers are being blamed for everything that is difficult right now in the school system. And of course, uh, we can't tolerate teacher bashing. That's not acceptable to me. Teachers are in the classroom to teach. And there must be supports in place to help them, help their students who have difficulty participating in classroom activities as expected. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. We'll now move on to Becky Myers. Colorado currently ranks 48th in overall teacher attractiveness. Douglas County has high housing prices and our teachers are the lowest paid in the Denver metro area. Some of them have over one, two jobs to make ends meet. Our teachers need to be valued, compensated well, and working conditions improved. So here's what we need to do. One, we need to talk with our teachers, start gathering data on the issues they're facing. Pay, school culture, the climate, curriculum, extra obstacles that are in their way, preventing them from being happy and successful in their teaching degree, uh, career. Two, we need to implement a plan, create a roadmap to correct issues the teachers are facing. The Employee Council is a professional and effective way to work with staff, staff members. And be it through committee policy changes, pay scale improvement, my commitment along with the kids first candidate is for us to work with our teachers and the continuing school board members in the interest of retaining our valuable teachers. Three, we need to create a viable budget, simple, streamlined, and work on waste. What does Douglas County School District need? Thank you, Ms. Becky Myers. We'll now move on to Kevin Lung. The most important thing is to make sure that our teacher knows there's a stable and predictable leaderships that they know and is predictable so that they won't go to uh, the surrounding school district to look for another job. And the current spot does provide that as evidence in the number of uh, turnover. When I 
before I elected, it was close to 20%, and now it's only 13.7%. And the number of the pink car in the school that's supporting us is overwhelming. So you know who give them confidence. It's Kevin Leung, Krista Hosman, Dr. Martinez, and Ms. Watkins. Stable leadership, predictable leaderships. We have able to increase $65 million in terms of compensations in the last four years, despite one year of COVID years that will be proposed. We spent two years and so many hard work from our seconds. staff and doing that. And also, we also need to have a board to understand how hard this teacher are working. Our opponents misinterpreted eye data to show that to, to make our district look horrible. Time our teachers do you. so great to make our students successful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Um, thank you, Mr. Long. On to Christy Williams. There are two things that attract good teachers, culture and pay. We need to first create a culture where teachers feel good about coming to work. We need to take unnecessary work off of their plates, and we need to let them focus on what they do best, which is teaching our children. The other necessary thing that we need to do in the near future is to put together a plan to add a ballot initiative and pass another MLO. In 2018, when the last MLO was passed, teachers were allocated $1,344 on average, which equates to $112 per month. This has caused distrust between the community and the board. The promise I would make to our community is to use future MLO funds to make the pay more competitive in our district, and most importantly, I vow to be more transparent with the funds so that the community knows exactly how it will be spent. I also think we need to continue to build on the work that Human Resources has been doing to get feedback from teachers on, regarding their pay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Christy Williams, and we'll now move on to Ms. Kaylee Winninger. When I asked teachers what attracts and keeps them in a district, some responses I got were competitive pay and healthcare benefits, quality of the professional development offered, such as keeping up to date on new teaching strategies, and opportunities for growth, and does that include a good mentor program? These are basics that a person in any job wants, fair pay with an understandable workload, and opportunities to move up and grow. So as a board director, what I would do is continually push for competitive pay and see how we compare with surrounding districts. And if that requires asking the community to pass an MLO, then I would absolutely push for an MLO. And to get MLO money, that requires the community's trust in the board. And with a one-sided board that doesn't represent the values of a large chunk of our district, that community trust is currently not there to get the well-earned money for our great teachers and staff. I would also get a gauge on if our teachers' career needs are being met. Are they given enough paid teacher work days? Are the professional development trainings being offered an appropriate use of time for improving skills for education? Or are they a waste of time? If our teachers are in an environment where they can simply teach and they aren't loaded down and stressed out with other responsibilities that should have never seconds. been on their plate, then our classrooms and our kids and their academics will thrive and improve. Thank you, Ms. Kaylee Weiniger. Now on to Ms. Krista Holtzman. Thank you. Our teachers' working environment is our students' learning environment. I appreciate recognition tonight from some of the candidates um, that we did create an employee council so that we could more closely work together with our teachers to talk with them and our staff about the needs um, in their working environment. Things like student-teacher ratio um, and other considerations about culture and climate. We've definitely made progress. We know we're retaining more teachers, but we'll continue making that progress by working together. And in terms of compensation, that is important. That's not why people teach in our public schools and work in our public schools, but they deserve to be valued as the professionals they are. And in the state of Colorado, we rank last in the nation for competitive teacher wage. And here in Douglas County, the challenges have been complicated by a misguided market-based pay system put in place by politically motivated boards of the past. Because of that, we've had to overcome some things. Um, we needed to restore employees that were harmed by pay freezes. We've made great strides in addressing pay gaps that were created. 
Um, and, and though our MLO, our local funding operating seconds. dollars, are the lowest in the Denver metro area, our starting teacher salaries are above average. Um, and our, our other teacher wages are at average, which is a great improvement from where we came from. Um, and I, Time I is up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Holtzman. We'll now move on to Mr. Mike Peterson. Two things I would do is first close the compensation gap, and I think everyone up here agrees. And as Director Holtzman just said, our starting teacher pay is competitive, but our average teacher pay is among the lowest in the district, and that has created problems. When I've talked to teachers, they tell me that it does not seem fair that someone that has been here three years, five years, seven years, and demonstrated great results gets line jumped because starting teacher pay is so high, but average teacher pay is low. We have to ask the teachers what they want. Um, we have to make sure that they are the, mo the main voices in reshaping that system that was just referred to, which a lot of the teachers just don't think is fair. Um, the second thing I would do, demonstrate appreciation and trust for our teachers. How do you do that? Give all our teachers, regardless of identity, political persuasion, religion, whoever they are, give them a voice in their professional development, ask them what they need, uh, ask them what type of curriculum they think is best suited and is evidence-based to produce learning improvement. And then finally, anyone that has a critique of this district, especially how it's being run, should be able to have a voice. And we need to listen to those voices and be humble enough when we get a critique sitting on the board that we change and that we put their suggestions into practice. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. We'll now move on to Ms. Julie Watkins. Thank you. We all agree that our teachers and staff deserve better pay. And as a board director, I would continue to bridge the pay gap and explore additional ways to better compensate our teachers. Salary is important, but it's not the only thing that attracts and retains teachers. Feeling empowered and valued is important, as is knowing that you have a voice. We have really great teachers in DCSD, and micromanaging the content of their lesson plans or suggesting that parents should be able to select how or what their students are taught is not something that will make teachers feel empowered or valued. We need to trust our teachers, and we need to continue to enable them to do what they do best, teach our students. And working in a supportive, positive environment with a culture of trust will nurture that. And the employee council is a great start. And I'm also passionate about giving our teachers even more of a voice as they are key stakeholders in future decision making for our district. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you candidates for your responses this evening. As we wrap up, we would like to provide each of you an opportunity to leave your audience with one last statement about yourself, your candidacy, or your priorities for the Douglas County School District. Mr. Kevin Long, we will begin with you. My name is Kevin Leung. My powers to accomplishments as your school board directors has been improving academic achievements. Dallas County School District has the highest graduation rate in the metro area. I have increased teacher's pay and career and technical certification programs. Safely keep in-person learning, expanded mental health access, and parental involvement in the past four years, and so does repairing aging school building. I will continue to work on those areas if we elected. We should all be concerned that national politics agenda are attempting to take over our school board and our school district. Our best teacher will not stick around if they're being accused of indoctrinating students, having a board misinterpreted the iReady data, no matter how hard they work to make sure that all our students are achieving their potential and their progress. Teacher wants stability, not political agenda or their operative leading our school district. My local business won the 2019 Governor's seconds. Award, and I won the 2020 Colorado Association of School Board McCarthy's Award. I hope to earn your vote this November because DCSD leader director to have experience who manage a seven me, seven, $700 million dollars school district. Thank you. Mrs. Christy Williams, you're next. Thank you, Legend, for having us today. And thanks to everyone who has taken an interest in the school district by being here. I want to thank also all of those who are working hard in this district from the schools to the cabinet. And I hope by being elected, 
that we can provide you support and cl clarity around the great work you do every day. Being on the PTO and the School Accountability Committee, I understand how to work with both parents and teachers and to meet the needs of both at the same time. Douglas County is a wonderful place. We have amazing students, we have amazing teachers, we have an amazing staff. It would be an honor to serve this community. I am so incredibly proud of the Kids First candidates and I am asking for your vote tonight. Please vote Myers, Weiniger, Williams, and Peterson. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. We will now move on to Mrs. Kaylee Weiniger. When I was a Douglas County student 15 some years ago, our school district actually didn't have the highest average for compensation in, in the area, but it had the highest demand for jobs. It was so competitive, applications for jobs in DCSD were only accepted during a certain one day a week window, and the pile of applicants was always high. And then 10 some years ago, Douglas County experienced a recession and an inept superintendent. We had teachers being told they had to throw away curriculum. We had teachers being told they couldn't read aloud to kids. We had teachers given unnecessary busy work and being told how to teach. These authoritarian orders and new awful pay structure resulted in a mass exodus of teachers and staff. It also resulted in our kids suffering and their test scores dropping. This time frame has been nicknamed the reformers. Since then, some improvements to compensation have been made. However, there are current similarities in authoritarian leadership that have me worried. Leadership's constant pressing of mask enforcement has pitted parents against admins and teachers against kids. This is not fair to anyone and it is distracting to our kids' education. Teachers need to be trusted to just teach. They need to not feel restricted and not seconds. have more added to their plate. When we look back on these past years and the leaders on the school board, what nickname will they get? The dividers, the enforcers? I guarantee you that they will continue being misleading and deceptive with their messaging and their wants and demands will continue to negatively Time's impact up. our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Krista Holtzman will now turn to you. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you all. This election is not about any one person on this stage. This election is about our students. Our students deserve leaders with experience and a proven track record. And over the past four years, our board has taken care of our teachers and our staff and our learning environments, and it has paid off. Our students have shown growth and achievement that's highest in the Denver Metro District area except for one school, and we're above average in every grade and subject level. Our students deserve leaders who value the diversity of our students, our staff, and our community, and who respect education experts and other experts who directly impact our students, like law enforcement and public health. Our students deserve leaders who have an unwavering commitment to focusing on the best interests of our public school students, magnets, neighborhoods, and charter schools, online schools. Not, our responsibility is not to support our private schools. Our public dollars are already limited to do the things we need for students. <clears throat> we need leaders who take the best interests of students in mind without consideration for political agendas or large money campaign donors who may expect a return on their investment. Tonight I'm asking for your vote seconds. and your support so that I can continue to support our students in schools. And additionally, Director Lung, Dr. Martinez, and Ms. Watkins will help us keep the positive momentum going. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mike Peterson. I'm just a parent who happens to be running for school board and I think backing off of all the little uh, issues around masking and curriculum and things, the question that we have in this election is who is best suited to raise our children? And I think the kids first answer to that is a respectful mutual partnership between our parents and our teachers and a board that will ask them both what they need to succeed. Um, all you have to do is attend public comment at any of the current school board sessions. You'll know that this board has attempted to remove parents as the critical check in that equation. To paraphrase Admiral Yamamoto after the attack on Pearl Harbor, I feel all this board has done is to awaken a sleeping giant and fill us parents with a terrible resolve. This is why we're running for school board. When you think of community, what our opponents call themselves, don't think of unity because they've done anything but. Think of compliance and control. That's what they've brought. 
When you think of kids first, think of bottom-up engagement, re respectfully listening to all sides. Think of empowerment of our parents and teachers as partners in education. And finally, think of accountability. When we're up there, we will own our decisions. We will have the humility to change course when we are wrong. And we expect every taxpayer, seconds. parent, student, and teacher in this district to hold us accountable. We will appreciate your vote on November 2nd. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. We'll now turn to Ms. Julie Watkins. Legend students, thank you again for providing this opportunity for all of the candidates up here tonight. And if any of you have witnessed any of the previous forums, I, I will be the first to admit I'm not the most gifted public speaker up here, but I hope that I've made it clear that I am passionate about working hard to keep pushing the positive momentum forward in our district. Everyone agrees that in-person learning is critical for our students' mental health, and mental health is critical for our students to succeed academically and socially. So perhaps foremost, I want to ensure that we are able to continue that, that in-person learning in a safe environment for all. I want to ensure that we are able to continue increasing the academic achievement of our students. Returning DCSD to destination district status is important for our students, our communities, and our property values, but it's also very important to our teachers. So we need to continue improving teacher recruitment and retention. I want to continue to stay focused on the well-being of all students in our district, and although it is not the school district's responsibility to raise our students. It is their responsib our responsibility to prepare them for life and educate them so that they can be solid citizens after K through 12. Um, much has been accomplished over the past four years and there is still much work seconds. to be done. The right team to do it is clear. Vote for Krista Holtzman, Kevin Lung, Ruby Martinez, and me, Julie Watkins. Spending the last decade volunteering in our schools and classrooms and serving in leadership roles, including PTO president for several years, has already prepared me to understand Thank what you. our students and teachers need. Thank you. We'll now move on to Dr. Ruby Martinez. What I hope you have learned this evening is that the current school board has been very successful in making academics, mental health, and teacher retention high priorities. I am asking for your vote because as a nurse, an educator, and as a leader, I bring important knowledge and experience to the board. The Community Matters Group is proud that we are a diverse group that mirrors our community. We represent different political um, parties, different ages, different races, different cultures. We have tremendous respect for each other and together we bring excellent knowledge and skills and ability. We will make decisions based on research-based evidence and best practices, not make decisions based on who can yell the loudest at the board meeting. This I promise you. I ask you to vote for Holtzman, Leung, Watkins, and me, Ruby Martinez. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. We'll now move on to Mrs. Becky Myers. We all know that we care about kids. We just have different opinions about how we're going to do this. I believe it's so important that we listen. We listen to the parents, teachers, the community, and we use the resources and experts we have out there. I believe that both teachers and parents need to have a voice in their kids' education and choice. I cannot stress enough that a school board in this large of a district should be making decisions with input from everyone. And I want to make it perfectly clear we are not the reformers. I was a teacher during that period. The current board has allowed outside issues into this district which are detrimental to our basic education. We cannot continue to have chaos and division. I was a teacher who cared genuinely, and I know teachers who care genuinely and love their students. And DC, Douglas County has nurturing and caring teachers. I'm advocating, Kids First Slate is advocating for all students to be taught literacy, math, science, and history. Yes, I mean our country's history. Just because we're not always happy with the truth doesn't mean we shouldn't learn it, know it. It's how we learn, and hopefully we will do better in the future. So remember to vote seconds. Myers, Weiniger, Williams, and Peterson, the kids first late. Thank you, Legend High School students and audience. I believe you got an A. 
Thank you, candidates. That concludes our DCSD Board of Education Forum. On behalf of Legend High School, I want to thank you for your interest in the students and staff of Douglas County School District, especially the Legend Titans. If you have questions or feedback about tonight's event, please email Mr. Nate Jones in the DCSD Communications Office at ndjones at dcsdk12.org. He has helped us during this process and would be happy to answer any questions or feedback that you may have for future events. Thank you for coming and have a great night. Hi, everyone. I would be remiss if I didn't make a few show notes here. This is our last forum. Uh, a lot of planning went into these, working with these great students. Uh, so just a quick uh, couple of notes. First of all, can we please have a round of applause for all eight candidates? It's been a pleasure working with all eight of you, and I, I appreciate you making the time and coming to all three of these. I know it's a big commitment, but they jumped at the opportunity to meet with uh, folks out here at uh, each of these schools and to work with these students. So thank you again. Uh, real quickly to uh, Principal Jason Jacob, thank you for opening your school uh, to us. Yes. And uh, Miss Cindy Jones, no relation. Uh, she is the admin assistant here, and she did a lot of the legwork. Uh, get me in touch with the students. I would like to thank uh, my crew in the DCSD communications office, Stacy Blaylock, Jan Reagan over there on the cameras back there. They are making it so that everybody can watch from home. Please give them a round of applause. And you, ca you can't see him back here. He likes to hide in his hobbit hole. But uh, Mr. Chris Shaleen, our, our multimedia guy, if you've ever watched a board meeting, um, if you've come to events like this, if you've watched on YouTube, it's because he makes that possible. So please give him a round of applause as well. <laughs> Selfishly, I'd like to thank Mrs. Jones, the art teacher at Cimarron Middle School. She's been pulling double duty while I've been at these things. So thank you. You're the best wife of all time. And uh, one more round of applause for our Legend Student Advisory Group. Thank you all so much. Please drive home safely.